morning traders welcome to your seven minute market update utilizing technical analysis to predict direction based on human emotion today is may 20 2012 we have a lot to talk about so let's get started this is the uh, spy chart which is the etf that tracks the S&P 500 and on Friday we've actually tagged this uh, mathematically calculated level and we've actually pierced it a little bit uh, we are also into this p uh, nice pivot point and this consolidation period here now the thing is um, with this piercing three of this ma mathematically calculated level it doesn't surprise me because on Friday you know you have short people and we have people who are long um, they don't want to hold into the weekend because they just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, Europe is uh, it could just come out with any kind of news over the weekend or, or any kind of quantitative easing. I mean, it, re it really depends and nobody wants to take that kind of risk because they're playing with, you know, millions of dollars. Now, this is a chart of the uh, SPY 10 minute. Uh, what we've essentially done was uh, we opened um, around this area here. We came up, we came down, we created this doji candle with uh, nice volume, and then we came back up. And then essentially, we just ended up going out. We retested the, um, the, uh, the lows, and then uh, we came back down, and then um, we hit this calculated level pretty much to the penny came back up we have our bounce off this mathematically calculated level we came down right under it and then we um, went up towards the uh, last 10 minutes of the day but we were unable to close above it so to me does that show weakness not really because if you think about it again everybody wants out on Friday and uh, this this volume candle here is just basically people covering their shorts so we're back to the daily chart and this is uh, this is the hard part about uh, doing technical analysis because you know you're gonna have your your first um, support level and then you're going to have your second support level and you're going to have to decide that if these two support levels are really close together which one are you going to take are you going to take the early one or are you going to take the late one and it really depends on uh, the type of risk that you're willing to take i like to take my risk closest to my stop out therefore my when i do stop out my losses are very small okay for example and, and then you know this is just an example say um my stop is here and i enter here okay so if i enter here at this point here my stop is all the way down here i mean this level here right now is about 129 and then this level here is 125 that's a four dollar risk okay what is my reward my reward is all the way up here at 136 so risk reward is great however am i willing to take a stop i mean a loss this far or am i willing to just wait till maybe we get to this level here uh, for a bounce and then my stop out would just be a close below here and then now my stop is going to be from you know 127 all the way down to 125 which is a two dollar you know two dollar loss versus a four dollar loss okay but essentially let's just take a look at our two support levels that I'm looking at now we had our calculated level and then now we have this uh, pivot point here which gives gives us two factors that there is a possibility of a reversal okay so so far that's two however uh, we had again pierced through uh, the pivot low uh, here okay so uh, does that show bad news again not really because it is a Friday so this does not surprise me all right but it would have been better if we could hold this level and then it would have given me more of a um, more of confidence that we may bounce as early as uh, Monday so now uh, in order to validate a possible bounce we're gonna have to look at the US dollar and this is a chart of the dollar and you know I had this line over here now we can get rid of this we can also get rid of this and save the chart so it doesn't come out again and then we have this double top uh, scenario here and I said in the uh, previous video that this was going to be a pretty significant uh, resistance point here okay and uh, what we what we'll have to do before we get higher is we need to consolidate a little bit either down over here or straight to the side before we can get up to this level here and then eventually uh, as discussed in the previous video all the way up here you know what to be honest I'm gonna need um, I'm gonna delete this line here because that's arbitrary so what we have is this uh, upper level here which is at about $85 and 21 $85 and change uh, we have this uh, resistance line over there right now to validate Monday's bounce we do have a pullback on the dollar if this dollar if this pullback holds and the dollar is oversold uh, overbought so if this pullback holds then we should expect the bounce on Monday now if the pullback does happen your first support level for the pullback will be at this pivot point here so we may tag this pivot point here before we get a bounce higher or we may just consolidate to uh, to the side before breaking higher now the dollars has just been pretty strong I mean it's just been just like a rocket going straight up we, we've, we're definitely into overbought territory right now uh, we are due for a pullback and again dollar down market up and vice versa okay now here's a chart of the uh, VIX which is the fear index and it measures the amount of fear or 
probable fear that's in current markets right now uh, so we had this up move we broke out of this upper trend line and again we came down at least 50 percent to retest this trend line we came up we had this uh, consolidation period and now we blasted through up we're now into this 200 moving average if we get a bounce off that 200 200 moving average we also have this pivot point here then the expectation is when the VIX goes down the fear is um, decreasing therefore giving the uh, markets a little boost okay so to answer the question of what I think is going to happen is I do think that we are very close to a bounce because all the signals are pointing there. Uh, whether it happens on Monday is the biggest question. Now, Monday is a low volume day. So to push through, um, you know, to, to prop the markets higher on a low volume day, um, then, you know, the probabilities of the markets going higher uh, wouldn't surprise me. However, now let's take a look at the second support line here, which is this 200 moving average plus this pivot point and this gap fill here. Okay, to me, this is a much stronger uh, area um, that um, sh we should get a bounce. Okay, and then obviously we have the uh, third support level here. Now, if we get some bad news over the weekend, which it doesn't seem like it right now because it is a Sunday, but it's a, let's just say we do get some sort of bad news out of Europe. Piercing through this level here would just definitely, you know, it wouldn't be out of the question. And then I would take the trade down here. But if we get nothing bad and Monday we, we you know, we gap down or uh, we come right into this level here, then I'll probably take the trade. Would I take the trade here? In my opinion, probably not because I, my stop out would be uh, a stop below here. Right, so I want to take it as close. Oh, I'm sorry. I stop be below here, cause uh, so I want to take it close, as close as possible, to this level here. But let me tell you, I mean, on the SPY, we're definitely in oversold um, territory already, and we've broken through, you know, so many support levels, and you know, we just we're basically a falling knife on on the markets right now. And have you ever tried catching a falling knife? Well, I have, and you know, sometimes you can do it, and sometimes you get cut. Um, and if you get cut, it depends on how far and how fast it fell before you, you know, determine how much damage you get on your hand for trying to catch a falling knife. Now here's the thing, right? The farther you fall, the faster you fall, the bigger the bounce, right? If you get a 45 pound plate, you know, those, those steel plates at the gym, and you, you pick it up and you drop it, chances of a bounce is highly unlikely, right? From your level, you're maybe about five something feet and then you, you drop it at maybe four feet, you probably won't get a bounce. But if you drop that 45 pound plate from 100 feet on top, uh, a building, and you and you drop it, chances of that plate bouncing off cement, you know, probabilities are much, much higher and the bounce is gonna be obviously a lot bigger. So the faster we fall from all the way down here to all the way down here without a substantial pullback, and we had a small uh, consolidation period here, but the substantial pullback uh, wasn't didn't really happen yet. So if we can get down here, the bounce is gonna be fairly large, in my opinion, okay? Um, so, you know, will I be willing to take a trade to the long side at this 200 moving average plus this gap fill and this um, pivot point here? Yes, I probably will if we can come straight down here. Now, yes, uh, on, on Friday, we did actually go higher. Okay, we started off the day higher and then we came lower. Um, what I need to see um, for Monday is we open here and then we, we close lower just like how it was on, on Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. Now, another reason why I would rather take the trade, uh, you know, at the 200 moving average and the pivot point is let's take a look at the weekly chart here. Now, on the weekly chart, let me just delete everything. Now, if we look at the weekly chart on the uh, SPY, you can see that we're, we're coming down right into this 50 moving average, right? Um, right there and the price about the 50, uh, 50 moving average is about 128.35. Okay. In addition to that, we have a Fibonacci retracement, a 382 retracement, and we also have this pivot point uh, retracement here that's right around that same area, okay? Now, going back to the daily chart, the 128 level is right around here. It's all around this area here. So my expectation is, okay, this is just my guess, Monday or Tuesday, we drop down into this level, or Monday we could actually drop down into this level, and then we get a bounce, and then that's when I that's when I go long because all the indicators, the indicators are much stronger, and my stop will be a lot closer. So if I am wrong in this move, I, I lose, I don't lose as much. Okay, so that's that's pretty much how I run things um, for myself here. Now here's here's the thing. If on Monday, let me just delete all, all, all the drawings here. If on Monday we actually start trading sideways, okay, we start trading sideways, or we start going higher like this, or just start start going sideways like that, then I will not. This trade will no longer be valid for me, and depends how much how how long we uh, consolidate. That this bottom line over here, I will um, probably take that trade instead. Of course, it, this line here is where I'll take if say Monday was an up day. 
if we get a bounce on Monday and then say on Tuesday we come back down, to me that's consolidation. And then I'm going to wait for this trade here. Even though it's going to be very powerful, a very powerful area here, I'm just obviously going to have to wait for this gap fill and then this calculated le level over here for a bounce. Okay, so that's the uh, SPY. Actually, going back to the SPY, just one thing that I wanted to mention. If you wanted to take the trade here, you know, I'll, pff, no problem. I mean, there is a lot of support here. It does make sense that we may get a bounce as early as Monday. But if you want to take a little lower risk, then I would take it here. And if you want to take an even lower risk, then I would actually wait to all the way down there. Does it get down here or even over here? You know, maybe not. Right now, we are into some pretty strong support. So we actually might get a bounce on Monday. But if not, for me, we have these three support levels that are really close together. I'll take the middle one. You know, that's that's just my opinion. Okay, let's move on. Now this this uh, gold chart, uh, the GLD, which is the ETF that follows gold. Um, gold has been um, very difficult to read right now because you know, as you can see, the pattern is just so sporadic right now. But this is my analysis on gold. I know in previous videos I said we had this calculated level here that taking a short here because we're in a strong downtrend, on especially gold, wouldn't be such a bad idea. So let's do an analysis and see what we're up against because it looks very similar to the SPY in the sense that you're going to take the first resistance or the second. Okay, let's do uh, a quick um, view of, of what I see on the GLD right now. Right now we're at uh, seven, the 7.5 seven um, retrace of the Fibonacci retracement. We went right into it. As you can see, it's uh, pretty good. We created this uh, doji candle here. However, now just because it's a doji candle, it does not mean, in my opinion, that we're going to get a reversal. Can we get a reversal? Sure, we could. But uh, does that mean we are going to get a reversal? What well, the chances are, just because you have a doji, if you don't have the right pattern and the right volume to support this uh, indecision candle for a reversal, I mean, there's there's combinations of things. It's just, just not because it's a doji that it's going to reverse. I mean, we had a doji over here, and we obviously gapped all the way down. But then again, we had a doji over here, and we gapped all the way up. I mean, um, so I, you know, let me just explain to you real quick how these doji candles work, in my opinion, OK? You have a doji candle, and doji in Japanese means, um, you know, to meet in one place. So basically, the bears and the bulls, you know, they, they fight throughout the day, and then eventually, in the middle, uh, at, you know, at the end of the day, because this is a daily chart, they end up pretty much in the same place, right? Meet right in the middle. Now, on a doji candle, what you want to see is higher volume than the previous days. So you had this higher volume than that last, in my opinion, is at least in the last three days here. At least in the very last, in the very least, two days, okay? But three days is good three days or more. Um, but just because it's higher volume does not mean uh, that you're going to get a reversal. I mean, the volume needs to be tapered down. So you have this high volume here indicating, see, so we had this down move here. We had this consolidation, okay? Then we had another down move here on higher volume. So this, to me, does not mean we're going to get a reversal. This, to me, means it's the start of, you know, the, the, the move down, okay? And then what you want to see is the volume kind of decreasing decreasing and then kind of you know decreasing and then you see a large spike in um, in the uh, in the volume here and then a doji candle and then that's your signal to go long I mean that's just one signal okay remember now the doji candle is a signal but with three factors you need to have volume and you need to have um, exhaustion type volume which is higher than the previous ones okay but it has to be you know from from the point of drop down here and then you have higher volume so it takes three just to make one signal the second signal was this mathematically calculated level and the third signal is obviously this pivot point here which was pretty significant as a support line okay um, going back to the SPY daily I, did, I forgot to mention this a little earlier but if you look at the volume on the SPY and this is why I really didn't like the SPY okay um, and again we could still get that bounce on Monday you know but a lot of people look at this volume and they're like look at this volume it's 300 million and last time we had this volume was you know all the way back over here okay at this green green candle all the way back there you know and the, yeah and, you know I agree the volume is great but you know the candle doesn't tell me that there's a reversal signal coming the pattern in, in the candle in the candles doesn't tell me there's a reversal pattern in addition to that volume has just literally increased you see that how it, in, it just increases like like that and to me that's great um but what i want to see is uh you know a high candle here if the candle was for example if this candle here was uh, this high and then now we had a decrease right lower than this candle high here and then we had a spike here on a doji candle then i probably would have took to trade here you know hands down no problem okay but with, without all the proper signals in my opinion the risk is higher and again you want to put the odds in your favor right and the more of the odds that you can put in your favor then the more of a chance that uh, the reversal will take place 
will be in your favor the higher it is right if that made any sense at all anyways going back to geo so in the geo day we're right at the 75 we have this we're coming close right into this uh, mathematically calculated level and no matter how i calculate this thing the calculation always ends up right here okay and then the next calculation is all the way up here so there is a possibility Okay, but not a probability, a possibility of GLD getting all the way up here. Highly doubtful because it would have to break through all these moving averages just to get there. And if it does get there, let me tell you the drop will probably be a lot stronger. So let's look at this mathematic mathematically calculated level here and see what we have. What we have is we have this gap window, um, which is you know a resistance point, and then we have this 20 moving average, which is another resistance point. Very uh, close to that, we also have um, I believe we had something else over here. Actually, no. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Which is which is three indicators, uh, and to me, that's that's enough. Uh, if we draw a trend line here, you know, we really don't get anything. Now, so that's the first support level, which which you know, to me, is is pretty strong. And because we're in a downtrend, right? Because we're in a downtrend, um, the likelihood of of you failing this pattern here, you know, the odds are in your favor, definitely with without a doubt. Okay. However, just like the SPY, we do have another resistance point here that is very close. Okay. So where would your stop out be if you took the level here? Well, my stop out would be all the way up here. So how much money would I lose if I'm wrong about the move? Well, I, I, if I take the move, if I take it from the 20 move, let's just say I take it from the gap window here to be safe, just on this uh, resistance point here. <clears throat> from here to here is how much I lose before I stop out or you know anything above the probably the 50 moving average now um, however if I just wait possibly that if GLD can get up to this uh, this uh, Fibonacci 618 which is a very popular Fibonacci level okay and then you have this gap uh, uh, gap uh, gap fill right here and then eventually when you get up here I'm pretty sure the 50 moving average will be right at this level too that's you know very powerful resistance point right there in addition to that if we grab this uh, lower pivot here we go straight across and we hit this uh, pivot here we hit this pivot here and we hit this pivot here what do you have we basically have another support uh, resistance point right in the same exact area so technically if I take the um, trade at the 50 moving average my losses will be very small because as soon as I take it at the 50 moving average if we close above the 50 moving average I stop out and I take a small loss and then I wait till it gets to 200 uh, moving average and then if I stop out of that then I wait to we reach this mathematically calculated level and then obviously um, to this um, you know um, double top there now this is the way I see it we're currently in a um, downtrend unless QE3 is mentioned or whatnot I mean that is possible uh, you know Uncle Ben always mentions QE3 and then we get a spike in the market to you know based on inflation however However, here's the thing. If we do um, close above this 50 moving average, I'll probably stay out of gold for a while because if we close at this 200 moving average, we have we would have basically taken out all three of these highs, these pivot highs, one, two, three, okay, um, which shows a lot of strength. And if we take out this high and then we take out this high, you know, gold is going to be in a, a very powerful uh, area right now. But for me to think that as a technical trader, um, that would be not out of the question you know obviously nothing's 100 percent guarantee however um, if we do that I'll probably stay out of gold anyway so taking the trade at the 15 moving average is something that I probably probably be looking at could we bounce off of this mathematically calculated level sure we definitely could it would be right into this 20 moving average I mean there's a lot of resistance um, signals here um, so you know for me we are very close on SPY for support uh, resistance level. We're very close for the GOD for, um, I'm sorry, we're very close on SPY for support levels and we're uh, very close to the GOD for resistance levels. Um, however, because we have resistance levels that are really close, I think I'm going to take a less of a risk, a less of a chance because, um, you know, you just never know in these markets today. Everything is just so volatile. I mean, 300 million shares on Friday. I mean, that's like norm that's double our normal 150 million uh, 150 million shares a day on the SPY okay so that's my analysis on the uh, SPY and gold I actually wanted I actually wanted to get into some charts uh, as some stock believe it or not I had 13 stocks that I wanted to discuss today but if I'm looking at the time here we're, I'm already at uh, 20 minutes so I'm just gonna do a few here that um, I, I find attractive and that's uh, the first one is uh, F5 okay, this is a chart of uh, F5 networks F5 networks. Um, 
we do have this gap fill level here at the 200 moving average, which is a pretty strong moving average here. And we also have a mathematical calculation here, which gives a pretty good support. And if I'm right about the S&P uh, breaking through the uh, first support level and going to the second one, F5 should just be right in it at the same time. And if, if the S&P uh, can catch a bid, then I'm sure F F5 can catch a bid as well. Okay. The next chart I want to look at is the IWM. This is the ETF. Um, for the Russell's 2000. Right now it's right into my calculated level here. Uh, however, it's broken down through the uh, 200 moving average and the gap fill. So it's, you know, it's a pretty powerful downtrend if, if, if you ask me. Amazingly, my mathematically calculated level was under these two support levels here. I, I really didn't think it would actually hit my calculated level, but it did. Uh, so we may actually get a bounce here, but I'd be more likely uh, to take a trade if it can get down here. I doubt it because it's such a far distance and we're already into this into this calculated level. So we, we may possibly get a, a bounce on the IWM, but uh, you know we'll see what happens on Monday. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll kind of watch watch this for now but if we can consolidate a little bit or just come straight down into this level then I'll probably take the trade to the long side. Now this is a chart of Exxon Mobil. I'm going to do Exxon Mobil, um, Chevron and the USO because to me that all um, coincides with each other. Uh, so we have this um, mathematical calculation plus a Fibonacci 50% and a 200 moving average um, uh, 200 moving average line there plus a consolidation period all in the same area to me is a very strong support line we've already come close to tagging it okay um, so if we break down through this on Monday um, you know I, I'm I'm out if um, we already get this bounce on Monday then you know this this trade is off the table but if we can come down right into it then I'll probably take the trade um, the thing about this though that I don't like on Exxon is that uh, it has consolidated if you can see there so it does give it enough power to break down uh, to get to the 618 so you just want to be careful on the Exxon mobile but um, when we look at the USO and um, Chevron we'll get a better understanding of what might happen this is a chart of uh, the USO here let me load the drawings USO right now is into the uh, 618 or is close to the 618 the thing about the USO is that it's very oversold right now but oversold doesn't really make a difference over you can stay oversold for a long time and the stock can continue down no matter if you're oversold or um, or not okay <clears throat> oversold just gives you an indication that you know we may be ready to turn over uh, but it doesn't mean that it will okay so we're gonna come into the 618 I do have a mathematically calculated level all the way down here <clears throat> which is at this pivot at this uh, gap fill here you know and we actually have a small pivot here so you know if the USO can get all the way down here that'd be great if we get a bounce tomorrow um, on Monday then you know then it's, it's not going to be off the table. It depends on how much it's going to consolidate first before it comes down. We can still take the trade if it gets here, but I uh, would we'll definitely trade uh, USO on the long side, provided the pattern looks good. So let's take a look at Chevron. So here's the funny thing about Chevron. Chevron has the same, almost the same pattern. It's coming into the 618. We have a mathematically calculated level here. Amazingly, right above the Fibonacci 75. All right, um, and then we have this uh, pivot point right here which actually to be honest could could go a little bit higher right about there so uh, in this area general uh, area here is going to be strong support it then that's if Chevron can get there but if you take a look at the USO the Chevron and the uh, Exxon Mobil they all have uh, a long ways more down to go um, however you do have Chevron here we're gonna have some support here if we can break down through these levels all the way down here then to me it's gonna be a dead you know Get, you know not guarantee nothing's obviously guaranteed but if you come straight down into here <laughs> I highly doubt it will but I've been saying that the past few days and you know the market has just been you know totally being demolished right now it's just a bloodbath um, but if we can get down here then yeah I would definitely take this uh, for a long play uh, for a short bounce or again you know the longer the, the longer and faster you fall the bigger the bounce so maybe a medium sized bounce I wouldn't say such a small bounce okay so um, that's this is your 7-minute uh, market update. God bless to you all. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.